All right, we're actually going to uh, flip the uh, flip the sessions here, and we're going to start with the uh, Redos Gateway Bucket Index Scalability. Uh, Guang is going to uh, give us a rundown of the blueprint. So if you want to go ahead and uh, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Pedro. Hello, everyone. Yep. Shall we start? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. OK. OK, thanks. Hey, um, uh, I'm going. Um, I'm going to uh, present uh, some work that we are interested to do in terms of bucket index. Uh, there was a there was a blueprint created, I think, in Amper, uh, which took about the bucket scalability, uh, scalability issue at real gateway side. I think there are a couple of issues there, including the first one is that um, parallel write to a single bucket will bring um, a scalability issue as the bracket index object parallel update does not scale at, at OSD side. Because all the like the put update copy operations will eventually operate to a single object. That is to read the like to read the version, something like that, and update the version and put a new record out there. So uh, from our testing that um, the single barcade put can only scale to scale to like 10 to 20 RPS. Um, the second problem is that uh, with more records, with more and more records in a single barcade that we um, that we have we are going to um, to face a large barcade issue that including that during scrubbing, recovering, backfilling, that um, when when the operation is happening to the bracket index object, which is happened to large, it will store all the update operations to the bracket. Our testing that our testing showed that with uh, um, with three million records in in, in the bracket, that the uh, backfilling could take up to three um, up up to two minutes to finish. And and from uh, Alice, we also um, saw some uh, customers report that deep scrubbing also um, the deep, deep scrubbing to the bracket index object also uh, stores the uh, uh, store all the operation to the bracket. The operation I, I, I mentioned, I mean that for the update copy, which need to eventually talk to the bracket index object. So um, those are the problems and there. There were a couple of options to talk about um, uh, over time to uh, improve situations. Those options including that um, uh, um, from the original uh, blueprint, those options include like sharding the bracket index object. That, is, that means that instead of um, one single object uh, uh, mapped to a bracket, we created multiple objects um, which map to the uh, same barcade, so so that um, the update operation um, uh, will uh, we we will uh, for a put operation we will hash uh, hash the uh, object key and see which bracket index bracket index chart it it needs to locate and only update to that one. So the trade off is obvious here because. Um, because when we listing, we don't have a uh, because the bracket index object has uh, um, is is implemented in level DB, which is uh, sorted by key. With multiple shards, we don't have a uni a, a global sorted uh, uh, key sorted map anymore. So that means that if we want to do a prefix listing, we need to talk to a couple of bracket objects. And aggregate data at like client side because we talk to multiple objects. Uh, but uh, the the benefit from this solution is also obvious. Uh, the scalability issue we like originally we have 20 uh, requests per second with like a, a 50 sharding we have 1,000. That that is more enough for most use case. And like like let's say that originally bucket has um, has one uh, has um, like 
10 million um 10 million records with a sharding like 10 we have 1 million records for each object that uh, reduce the time that needed to do scrubbing backfilling and uh, recovery so um that's one option another one is another one mentioned that is a blind uh, bracket which we tried before that is completely disable bracket index because for some user case they, they don't need a bracket listing feature um, and uh, for that for that use case we can just disable it it has a benefit that um, we don't we don't uh, we are not bothered by the previous problems we talked about like backfill like large bracket scalability and we also reduce the uh, load to the entire cluster because each upload operation will need to talk to the back index object twice, which um, increase the ops, OPs, OP numbers uh, significantly for put up uh, for put load. So um, that is a brief uh, introduction in terms of the the problem we have, the options we 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 can explore. So, is there any question or uh, comments on top of that, or is there anything I miss? Um, I think everything you said is is right. I think you've identified sort of the two the two main solutions, and those those definitely make sense to me. Um, are are you you're you're sort of you're most interested in going down the path of of sharding and not doing the the blind buckets in this case? For your for, uh, yeah. for your particular use case, you want to retain the bucket listing abilities. Uh, yeah, yeah. Currently, uh, we we already okay. have a prototype that we uh sh we we have a configuration which is configured uh, um at the real gateway configuration is that uh, uh configs mm -hmm. the the number of shards we need for the bucket. Um, we also mm -hmm. put that that shard information to the bucket metadata, which means that. If one day we want to um, to support uh, more shards, we just update the configuration, which does not break the original brackets, which has uh, yeah. another uh, shard number. That is one thing. Have you is there um, is there a way to make it so the 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 bucket create operation can also pass the number of shards? Because it might be that some buckets you know are going to be small, so you specify one shard or use the default, and other buckets you know are going to become very big, and you want to have a larger number of shards for them. Sorry, sorry, say what, what is the question? Is it, do you mean that? Is it, have you, have you, um, have you looked at adding a, a f argument for the bucket creation operation ah, that lets you specify yeah. the number of shards? Yeah, uh, do you think that makes, I think, I personally think that makes a lot of sense to let customers specify the number of mm -hmm. shards he or she would like because yeah. he most, is clear about how many uh, objects he is going to put into the bucket, or how many r parallel writes yeah. he is expected. So um, yeah. I think I think yeah. that 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 feature is that feature makes sense. Where do you store that piece of information? That is that is sort uh, store metadata. I mean, where do like where do you the store the number of the information that is, if it's static, then you don't have to form a lookup. But if there are a lot of buckets, how do you identify how many shards there are when you're serving a read or a write? There, there's already a there's already a bunch of metadata associated with each bucket stored on the bucket object. Um, right. So that there's a place to put it already, and that gets that's cached by the the gateway, I believe. Okay, so we assume that the number of buckets is small enough that the, this doesn't need an extra lookup. Well, and get it never needs to look up. Like we can, I think, right, oh. Josh? I think get you can just go straight to the. Is that true? I'm actually not sure. Yeah. No, maybe hey, it does. Forget, get, forget you might. I don't think you need to look up um, for it. I'm not sure about that though. I don't know the exact object structure very well. I yeah. think it um, might need to look up if you don't have the bucket in memory because it needs to make sure it has the right instance ID. Right, ACS. But I'm not. Ah, uh, that's right. Okay. Certain of that. Yeah. Right. Um, well, in any case, there's a there's a there's a cache on the Redis gateway that caches that bucket yeah, metadata, yeah. and you can set yeah. that accordingly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
But I mean, given that this is a lookup you need to do anyway if it's already out of memory, because you need to go from the bucket name to the correct bucket instance. Right. So and yeah. Be able to check it the ACLs as well. So yeah. it's, it's, there's some extra cost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there were maybe a few extra things that would, would, I would want to add to be able to support this uh, for with the like the reader's gateway sync agent for the uh, G replication. We need to yeah. we need to make sure that it's supported through like the reader's gateway admin APIs, so that when you get the bucket metadata, it, it includes the um, number of shards for that bucket, and when, when yeah. you put it that. And you know, it creates it with the appropriate number, and as well, yeah. uh, since we're adding the shard number uh, to the um, bucket index log, we need to make the Reader's Gateway Sync agent aware of that and um, able to use that if it exists or fall back if it uh, to be backwards compatible with the old gateway um, yeah. old gateways. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, I have a. I, go ahead. Sorry, Steve. Please go ahead. I just had a quick question about the bucket index log. Is that is that log? This is for the geo replication. Is that on the actual bucket index object, or is it a is it a separate object? I think it's a separate object. I think it's all. It's all the logs are separate. Object. Okay. And is, okay, it, is uh, it already sharded, or is it? Um, yeah, I, I can I can uh, give one object. update for that. So um, so for the bucket index log, that uh, there's a. Uh, uh, Monitic increasing version number out there uh, stored in the bracket index object, uh, so that from a client side that he or she can uh, list um, list all the uh, operations starting from um, one version, because we shard uh, we shard the uh, bracket index object that breaks the original semantics of uh, like uh, there's a single version that is. Money, money, money tick, uh, increasing. So in, in order to address that issue, we uh, issue the request to um, to multiple shards and uh, and I call back the shard ID to user so that the client at the client side, which is Riddle's gateway agent, could uh, could issue a request with a marker which includes a shard ID together with a version number. So that we can um, we can still maintain such semantics, like from a client side, he or she would know that from which from which point he wants to list those op operations afterwards. Does that make make sense, Josh? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Not another another. Per shard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Log markers. Yeah. Yeah. An another. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. Another uh, proposal I would like to uh, to discuss is that um, for certain use uh, currently for the listing operation, we issue the listing request to all the shards and aggregate data at the client side, and we preserve the S3 API, which is uh, a start object, a prefix, and a, and a return a certain number of objects with that start object and prefix. So, um, mm -hmm. so as, as I mentioned at the beginning, that the trade-off that is that the listing operation is a little bit heavier than previous because we need to talk to more uh, shards uh, so as to get the result. I, I think uh, another option we may explore is that if user doesn't care too much about the prefix listing, um, we can uh, we can actually, but rather they, they just want to iterate all the objects from within a bracket. Uh, another option is that we we can uh, start we can implement a, a simple like iterator stuff something like that to um, to uh, iterate each bracket and uh, return back all those key, uh, all those records one by one. Like for a single request, we only need to talk to uh, one bracket object, uh, which is specified by user. Uh, and for corner cases, which uh, the, the, the number he requested counts the bracket boundary, we need to talk to. And we return each mm -hmm. trunk one by one. And, uh, um, and that uh, dramatically uh, 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 reduce the cost 
which is needed by the bracket listing. Um, the result is that they, um, the, the benefit is that uh, uh, the cost is low, but uh, we, don't, uh, we don't return back a globally uh, increasing uh, key record. That, yeah. Does that so make it's sense? Basically, it's, it's an unordered listing at that point, right? Like you're getting it yeah. sort of in an yeah. undefined order. So yeah. I guess the, the key challenge then is that your position is no longer just an object name, but it's something that might be somewhat opaque. It's probably going to be a shard ID and then a key right. name in this case. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can actually hide the information like for each, we can use something like the user defined metadata or uh, 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 something uh, like users uh, identify a starting point, which is zero, and we can, I, I, um, we, and we can I don't, uh, I call back the next uh, um, the next like metadata which we need to uh, to start with mm -hmm. some something like that yep. because we only need to maintain uh, another uh, parameter which is the bracket sharded ID mm -hmm. that does that some uh, a reasonable change on top of this I think that makes sense so let me just make sure I'm Understanding, you you basically want to add a new list operation that's like list unordered, that yeah. um, and the and the offset is just sort of an opaque string that in reality is going to be the shard ID and the object name, but is, yeah, you probably just yeah. want to make it, it undefined from user's perspective, so yeah. that just to keep it simple, so we can change it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that yeah. makes sense to me. It's it's funny because a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we sort of bend over backwards to support is this ordered listing. Um, yeah, and in reality, I think a lot of most people who are listing don't need that, <laughs> or many people that are listing, they they don't need to use yeah. the prefix search and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. For uh, like for our use case, we just want to uh, the bracket listing is not used by an uh, online service, but for operation uh, for operations, so that we 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 don't care the order, but we want to list all the uh, records from from one bracket. So. Um, in that case, we can um, we can use the way we just talked about to uh, iterate all the records, but we don't care about order, so that can uh, decrease uh, the, the the load to the system with the same almost the same result. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yep, I think okay. we should, that would be something that we should support. Yeah, yeah that'd be a great thing to support. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I, I wonder if we want we could if we want to make that like a configuration option so that that would apply to the default listing um uh, command rather than having a separate command for it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think the default uh the the default command that that does not change. So user from from user's perspective, he or she just use our original way. But if he doesn't care about order, he can use some like. A, 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 a customized metadata, something like that, to to achieve the purpose as he um, uh -huh. he wants to achieve without um, like uh, reduce the load to the system. Would it make sense to just I extend mean, the API and add a second listening call? Because the semantics or add two, is actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Like you, you could have a, a list ordered. That's the old behavior. A list unordered. That's the new behavior. And then list. <laughs> would be optionally doing one or the other, depending on how you get to go. Well, I think if the system somehow, if, if the system either doesn't care or finds it advantageous, then the unordered one just returns the ordered one. So I don't think that part's a problem. Unordered just means that it doesn't imply ordered. Yeah. It's not like you'd be violating the uh, contract by returning it in order. Well, I guess uh, I, think, I think what um the suggestion was that in some cases you would want to the system the regular list command that traditionally is ordered to return something unordered which just sort of does violate the contract i guess but that would have to be you know not the default but my okay that, was the, that could be like a, a configuration option stuff like conf the administrator turns on because perhaps they have lots of very large buckets and they don't want their gateway to Fill up its memory with all the object, object IDs while it's listing them, so they can sort them before sending them back to the client. Well, the application level would have to make no assumptions about that. So, for that to be useful, the application level would have to be such that it actually doesn't notice if they come back. Yeah. 
which will be true yeah, a lot of time. For some. Will people necessarily know whether their application layer uh, requires that? Sometimes. If you give them the option, so, well, okay, sometimes. But yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, those times where they do know, they probably also control the application, in which case they can just make it use the other operation. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> see you way. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think in, in general, though, yes, adding a, an order list would be a very good thing. Um, okay. If we can, okay. especially if we can wean people off the the default one. I have a sorry. This is going back a little bit, but I have a question. Um, going back to the um the bucket index charting and the um and the bucket index log. I wonder if there are um, <clears throat> if there are instances where we want to shard them. Are there any instances where we'd want them to be shard differently? Sharded differently? I guess not, because for any put, even an update, you're still updating the index. So it's not like you would have more log traffic than you would have index updates. Like they're going to be proportional either way. Is that right, Josh? Um, so can you repeat that? Like, is there any, <clears throat> is there any case where you would want to shard the index log differently than the index? I suppose not because if, if there's any, any object that's in the log, it needs to sort of always be in the same log, which means, yeah. I mean, you could potentially, um, I could do the same. Uh, yeah, I don't think it would make much difference since if you're, you're randomly yeah. placing them on both, so. Okay. Yeah, I think it matters. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Is the log not just attached to the bucket index anyway? It is, right? I was just okay, wondering yeah. if that, if it, yeah. if, it, if there is a reason why we'd want that to be different, but yeah. in retrospect, I think no. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's other reasons too that we want them to be the same because when they're on the same object, it's fewer write requests to the yes. LSDs and things. So. Yeah. And it's okay. atomic and safe, whatever. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So yeah. never mind. Yeah. Ignore me. Um, okay, um, okay. That is pretty much what I have. I have a um I have a question about the um the blind buckets. If you wanna yeah. if you don't mind talking about that for a second. Um because I think there's also that also is useful for a lot of use cases. Um, you said you, you guys had a, um, you did a patch that actually implemented that. Um, how, how much did you have to change? How much broke? Do you have a sense of how difficult it would be to, to actually make that something that we, that we support? Um, I think, um, if we, uh, if we can let users specify the shard, uh, strategy, it should be pretty mm -hmm. straight, straightforward to uh, implement because when user create the bucket, he can um, he can specify that he would like to uh, blind bucket, and we can uh, serialize that information, persist that information to the bucket metadata. And for all the uh, bucket related operation like put, uh, upload, listing, we just we just uh, read that information and uh, decide what, what we need to do. Most most likely ignore the operation. Just skip like the bucket mm -hmm. index update and listing. So mm -hmm. yeah. So if so so if we implement the the way that user can uh, specify the strategy when creating bucket, that should be pretty simple to to implement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, no I think comment. that I think that would I think there are, there are definitely lots of people who would be interested in maybe not lots but there are people who would be interested in that too. Yeah. But I think yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Sage, I, I, I got one question in terms of how mm -hmm. we can, uh, because this is the first time that we um, start working on a blueprint. 
uh, I would like to understand the process that we, how we can uh, contribute and commit it back. Currently, I have an implementation which, um, which implement the, the, the sharding, the, the, the something like that schema chain for um, Bracket Index Lock Chain. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, on top of that, we talk about a couple of things that including user create, user uh, uh, specify the shard number blend bracket and uh, an order listing. So uh, do, do, do you think that we should uh, implement all of those and uh, do a, like a large pull request or we do one by one, like like merge this bike and we, uh, we, we, we add features on top of that um, one by one? Which um, one uh, is I mean, work? very generally you have, I mean, the right you know, write, writing up the blueprint the design, discussing on the list, and then having a, a pull request, that's all That's all right. Um, I think generally you want to break it into small pieces, though. So yeah. I'm looking at the, the current pull request, and it's just one patch that has a, a couple thousand lines or, I don't know, many hundreds of lines of updates. Yeah. So you'd want to break that into a patch that, like, um, you know, adds the additional fields to the bucket, the, the structures, um, yeah. you know, a patch that will will store and retrieve it. Um, a patch that will um, set it when you create the bucket. A patch that will let you specify it when you create it, create the bucket via the metadata, um, yeah. and then yeah, a series of patches that will support it for listing and then for the put and the get and whatever. So it's, so that it's all you know bite-sized chunks that are sort of conceptually okay. separate and easy to review, right? Okay. Um, okay, I see. Yeah, and then it's just a matter of. Um, you know, cornering Josh or Yehuda on IRC, and <laughs> and and getting getting it reviewed. Um, but I think that the, the smaller the pieces, the the easier it is to review because you can do it. You know, in yeah. some pieces, um, and so that'll yeah. help. That'll help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for uh, clarifying that. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I think we're. I think everybody's very excited to see this work done too, because this is in. You, you guys are not the only people, obviously, that hit this problem. Um, I think the one thing, I guess, would be sort of my comment is, um, as we're doing this, we should have a, a little bit of an eye towards the future, because someday, eventually, the the goal would be that when you create a bucket, it has one shard, and then when it, as it gets big, it will magically the gateway will dynamically split it into, you know, four shards and then 16 or something. So it'll, the sharding will sort of be um, auto-tuning, I guess. Um, yep. And so we just, we don't have to do that now, obviously, um, but mm. um, we want to keep that in mind so that we don't paint ourselves into a corner and make it harder yeah. to solve that that problem later, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in particular, I think we want to think about that when looking at unordered listing. I was going to bring this up but you got there, so. Um, okay. Because if the unordered listing is specifying an offset in a shard and there's a shard, uh, a, a change in the shard number going on while that's happening, I'm not really sure how that would interact. Yeah. As long as the well, then you have like yeah. a shard instance in large the shard instance ID. Yeah. Well, I mean, mostly that's what I'm saying, though, is we want to make sure that's part of the API starting now so that it doesn't get changed well, later yeah, on. I think it's just an opaque identifier, though, so it, it's not okay. like a... The client knows anything about what that shard ID means. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's but true. even even so, if you make it if you make it like a ha an offset in the hash space, um, instead of the actual after you modulo it by the number of shards, right. um, oh, that's a then it, you could actually have a listing that's happening while you're resharding the background. It can still. You can use the same trick we use for PG splitting. Or for the dir frags in the MDS. Because they're also solving the same problems. Like it's reader versus the directory fragmentation that the metadata server does. The same, same type of thing. You could even use the the frag t type if you really wanted to, or not. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yep. I wouldn't worry too much about it. This is a good start. Cool. Does that cover off on that one pretty much then? Cool. I'm guessing we won't have a whole lot of questions from the audience I, since the audience is so small. I did have uh, one question. When you're doing uh, multi-part upload, 
Is there any atomicity we rely on between the pieces you're multi-parting and the resulting object? I don't think there's anything that'll change here. Um, the way multi-part upload works is that yeah. you actually upload each piece as its own object, and then once you assemble them, then they're sort of hidden from the listing. Right, so that's that's the part I'm asking about. So presumably at the moment there's some atomicity between when you assemble them and when they get removed from the listing? Oh, um, so they're already in a special namespace. That's actually... Okay. Actually, although, yeah, that's, I actually don't remember. Um, is that going to be a problem? Do we Are we supposed to be able to flip a switch on them at the same time? Yeah. With sharding, typically your problem is operations that span shards, and this is the only one I can pick up in S3. Yeah. So I was just curious. I don't, I don't think they span shards, though. I think that at this level, in the bucket next, it's, uh, it only, it's only representing the RGW objects, not the Vados objects. So the fact that they're stored over many Vados objects is irrelevant. Well, no, I mean, a multiple no, object is actually several RGW objects. Ah, okay. All right, that's, yeah. Anyway, that, that might be an issue then. Yeah, um, that is, that's a good one, Sam. Unfortunately, I don't remember it anymore. Um, <laughs> have you looked at that? I'm sorry, I can't say your name right, but have you looked at that, Guang? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, multi -power, multiple power upload break anything in terms of the original implementation because that is not some something managed by the Berkeley index. So, like, like how the how those manifests are managed is is another another layer or another object. I don't see anything that is related to Berkeley index object. Uh -huh. Okay. But, but in I, particular, I in, in particular, though, actually, even if there is a race, I think this is a pretty safe one to leave around. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine if that's yeah. the answer. Just, um, you know, yeah. write it down somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll go comment on the pull request for that so that Yehuda at least figures out the state. When he looks, I, I'm just guessing that Yehuda's going to be the one to deal with yeah. this, well, which unfortunately I mean, means we have to wait until he gets it, back. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, if it if it were a problem, um, let's just assume for a second that we do need to like update all the parts when you're doing the final put or whatever to assemble them. Um, that just means that when the parts are placed in the index or when they're sharded, we need to do that based on what the final object name is going to be. Yeah. Ugh. Which I don't know if that works in. I thought you I got to name them in water. Yeah, I think you can in Swift. I think you can name whatever you want, but in um, in S3 they're sort of more structured, if I remember. Oh, I would solve it. Well, but so we just uh, we just hash them based way, on but... something <laughs> based on the, the original name rather than each individual name. Right. Except for Swift, that wouldn't work. But maybe in Swift, that that atomicity is handled differently, and it's not a problem. So. Because yeah, yeah. Because in Swift, it's actually they're 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 first class objects. It's not like they're hidden or anything. I think. I, just, <laughs> I don't really remember the stuff. But I think I think they're just regular objects. And then at the very end, you do a manifest that says, "By the way, this is a meta object that includes all these other ones." Anyway, yeah. Okay. To check with the Yuda. Cool. Okay. That, that, well, this looks great. That's all I have. Thanks, guys, for right. uh, yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Uh -huh. Yep. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.